Alright, so before we continue, I want to talk a little bit about sort of Houdini's folder structure. So if you uh, remember me talking like a couple of videos back, we talked about this uh, data tree on the on the left here. So you can click on this thing here and then you get the data tree. And let's say we make an app, a geometry, we call it object underscore one. You would get an object called object one and maybe copy paste it. So we also get an object two. You can see it in the data tree called object one, object two. And let's say in object one, we will make a pig and then put a null and call it out underscore pig. And then head over into object two and then make object merge. And okay, so what you can see already happened here in the uh, viewer here is that we have object, which is the, basically the folder object. So if you think of a Windows folder, for example, this would be a uh, like, like your C drive, for example, and then in your C drive, you have a couple of folders. You have a folder called object one and object two. And then you have a, um, have, have like inside of there, you have a couple of files. Okay, then then we can look at a specific file. So what file we may be looking at? We are looking at. Uh, we want to look for our out pig file. So if we go on our object merge, and then we get the same thing, and then we can go into object one and choose out pig, and you can see it will point to an absolute path where it is. Well, in Windows it would be on the disk, but here it will point to the path. It will be inside of Houdini. So this is just an absolute path, which is easy to understand, right? It's just an absolute path on where it is located inside your, um, yeah, well, inside your, your structure, basically. But there's also something that's uh, relative paths, which are a little bit more tricky to understand. So let's say I make a box. And let's append a transform to our object merge here. And we want to maybe, start, by the way, put this into this object that will make it if this has world, if this had world transformations, for example, then you can see it works in here. If I didn't do this, then it would just stay at the uh, center. So that's something to keep in mind, but let's put this to now for like this. All right, so put a transform here and put another transform on our box. And now let's transform our pig up a little bit by two. Now let's say we want to do the same thing on our box. Well, what we can do is on this channel here, we can cop, uh, right click, copy parameter, and then right click on the uh, transform of the box and paste relative references. All right, so you see it already moved up. And now you can see it points differently to the um, well, to the to the to to the thing we're referencing, it's using two dots, and then transform one and then ty. All right. So the way this is doing it is that by using two dots and slash, it will say, okay, this is I am currently uh, this is uh, this this thing I'm looking for is outside of my own little folder. So this is like basically the folder that we're in. We want to go outside of this folder. So then we're in this this location. Then we're looking for something called transform one, and then we're and then we're inside of there. We're looking for a parameter called ty. So this will be ty. So if we hover over this, it will say tx, ty, tz. So it's it's looking for that specific path. So that's just with the two dots and the slash. So that's ba basically how you can reference uh, channels. For example, I could also use absolute pass for this. So I could type slash obj slash object. Uh, we are on object two, and then we're transform transform one slash ty. Right. So that's also working. So it's still you can see it's still linked up. So, but uh, in Houdini, you often use relative references to refer to stuff um, just inside of uh, like inside of your 
work area, for example. And this, this makes it a little bit confusing for some people. Um, but just keep in mind that with the dots, you just basically say, where are you going to look? So if I'm going to type dot dot slash, we're going to look outside of this thing. If I type dot dot slash again, you can see we get all the way to object level. Then I could even say, I want to look inside of object one. And then I want to, what did I have there? I had a test geometry, pig hat. Then I could look inside of our pig geometry, even if I want. So what do I want to look for? Let's say translate Y or something. Now you can see it goes back to zero. But that's because our pick here, you can see. So translate zero. You can see if I move this up, you can see right now the box moves with my pick because I am looking looking for it this way so people who are familiar with something like linux might be familiar with this way of working just keep in mind that just dot dot slash dot dot slash it just refers to going up a level inside of your folder structure and then pointing towards whatever you're looking for okay now let's say okay wh why would i want to use a relative reference instead of absolute references because I mean, it also works if I if I do it with the uh, like the absolute reference, right? So slash obj. So this also works, and this is probably easier to sort of understand like where it's coming from. Well, imagine if we if we're making an asset or so, like a scene that's going to be reusable, or let's say we have an effect that's gonna be used in this in this uh, sequence, but also another sequence. This will work. But this won't. Just let me show you. Like, let's let me copy and paste these over to a new Houdini sequence. Let's make a subnet inside of here. Let's make a subnetwork, and then do another subnetwork. Just completely change up the configuration, and then make a couple of objects in here. So let me. So right now, like over here, I have a subnet. So a subnetwork is, by the way, sort of like a folder you can uh, you can use. I, I haven't shown, shown those yet, but it's like a folder. So right now, my structure will be subnet1 slash subnet1 slash object whatever. So if I go into object2, you can see this one errors because it, it doesn't, like, it cannot find the object it was looking for at the where it previously was. Well, this thing still works because this thing is using relative um, relative paths so because it's just saying that go out of this object go out of this object then go to this object so th this will still work so it's kind of important to understand this because we are going to use this path type structure you're going to use that everywhere to point to objects to point to channels so i kind of wanted to get that out of the way and really explain like why this something like this is important um, I actually had this recorded a little bit in less detail. Um, so the stuff that's going to be after this, I'm briefly explaining it, but I was talking to someone on Twitter and they pointed out like this was something I didn't understand that great when I was starting out with reading. So I thought maybe you make a separate video about how this sort of works. So it's clear that, and that when you're going to use these expressions later, when we're doing the procedural modeling and stuff that you know sort of how this, uh, how this all works. Thank you.